When I read the email, mini chapel space available and saw the spreadsheet, I, I thought, yes, I should totally do that. I turned around and said, sure. Man, it sounded like the best idea. And use it for time. We were going to inspire these kids. We had all these ideas of how to inspire you to be productive and use your time wisely. I thought I could show you a video of me trying to catch up with Ryan's marathon training. Yes, marathon. And I can run for more than two miles without hating the little birds chirping happily around me. Uh, pretty flowers blooming around me, the sun shining. Mm. Or we could show a video of us trying to learn to play an instrument. How to do a headstand. Or how to fly a helicopter. Do 200 push-ups without fainting. However, in all that excitement, there were many things I didn't think about. First, I'm a Spanish teacher, not a motivational speaker and definitely not a Netflix quality producer. Second, even though we are both staying quite mentally sane, we absolutely are not experts on how to survive COVID-19 without feeling confused or the best 10 things to do during the quarantine. Nobody's an expert because everybody's 10 best things are personal to them. And finally, I didn't want to give a lecture about how you're taking too many naps or playing too many video games. Still, we wanted to give you a little encouragement because we care about you, what you think, and how you feel, and what you need. So our message is one about companionship. We're in a time of social distancing, which can only make us think about things we can't do or people we aren't allowed to see. But we are working on seeing this as a time of social closening. What can what about the people we can see? The people we're forced to stay in the same house with? Can we see it as an opportunity to explore them and get to know them better instead of people just living their lives parallel to ours? Well, Mrs. and Coach ER, you might say, that's easy for you guys. You live with a person you love and are married to and agreed to be trapped in a house with. You don't have to live with my little brother. Or older brother. Or older brother. But during this time of quarantine, it wasn't quite that way. I wasn't sure what to do with so many spare hours during the day. There's something good about a daily routine, and your job definitely plays that role. I felt bad for not having my weekly dance classes and not reaching 8,000 steps before 2 p.m. And I shared this with Ryan but it only seemed to me as if I was complaining. Something was missing. It wasn't until Ryan sat with me, sorry, sat with me in her living room and we came up with this great plan for me. And I felt better. And not because I completed all those crazy activities or because I made it look like a pretty page in my bullet journal. It was sitting down with him and taking and talking through all these things I had in my head that I finally felt calm. Up until now, I still have days when I have the feeling that I should, I should be doing something super incredible. But instead, I turn to my right, you show the Ryan's on the other side, and ask, Ryan, how's everything going on that side of the rock? And that moment of coming back from where our minds were wandering is very helpful. Asking, do you want to go for a walk? Do you want to eat a clementine? Do you want to eat a clementine while we watch the cats drinking water from the bird fountain? Or do you want to build a snowman? <laughs> it's taking us some time and work to enjoy all of each other's humanness without forced activities we don't enjoy. Valeria finally stopped asking me if I want to create a modern dance choreography with her. I stopped trying to run his million kilometers. And we eliminated puzzles from our list. The key isn't the activity itself, and it's also not just being in the same room as each other. The key is intentionally acknowledging each other, acknowledging that we're breathing the same air, 
and probably going through the same things. We're trying to practice social closing, and you don't need to be in loft to do that. So here are some ways we're practicing social closening. Every day we try to, one, do an activity together, like this. this is scary. See? Not modern dance, but almost. <laughs> Two, chat with each other with no distractions. That's Valeria's favorite. And three, make food and eat together. It's good to go do our separate stuff, but we need to come back and reconnect. So we do human contact. Do my thing. Human contact. If you have people in your house, you don't have to be socially deprived or something like that. It's okay to talk to people in your house. That isn't against the law right now. How can you practice social closing with the people who are right beside you? The people you can be with. 